folks. High country California. All right, well, just going to do a weather share today, but um, just looking at our local uh, newspaper for our county up here, Teller County, Colorado. Uh, it's the Ute Country News. Uh, small circulation, <laughs> but there's about 20,000 people here in the county, maybe a little more. Uh, just really nice to see on page seven. Uh, there's a nice little article um, by Bonnie Kurth about chemtrails. Apparently they heard something on Coast to Coast AM and did a little more investigating. And basically um, lets people know where to go if they want to know what's up there in the sky. Um, it's the first thing I've seen in, in print, at least up here. Um, it did remind me that during the Waldo Canyon fire last year, um, during a live press conference, the, uh, uh, they, were, they were talking to the, uh, the head of the Wildland fire crew and some woman in the crowd started screaming, why don't they use the harp array to move the weather and bring the rain over and put the fire out? We kind of chuckled about it at the time, but you know, only in Colorado or you know, would somebody actually mention that because it's Colorado Manitou Springs and if you're from there you know. Um, so she yelled about it. We laughed about it two days later though. It rained, um, basically slowed the fire down. Unfortunately, one of the consequences of that storm though is it blew the storm into Colorado Springs and took out you know, 500 homes. Um, so did they use it? Who knows? Uh, it's just nice to see that all these things that we've been called, what chemtards, we've been called you know, crazy, we've been you know, just, right, those things don't exist, nobody worries about them. It's nice to see that somebody actually took the time to put out a little article that actually quite a few people are going to see up here. Good job. Thanks for doing it. to rain. Uh, as we got into the afternoon hours, or later around in the afternoon hours, say about 3 o'clock or so, the fire was still up here along the ridge lines. Then some thunderstorms developed, and they were generally to the south and west of Denver, so they weren't even really overhead. But they produced some very strong outflow wind. That's when the cold air falls out of the storm, hits the terrain, just like water went on the table, and then spreads. And in this case, because they were located up here, the wind was spreading this way, so we had a, a northwesterly wind, which we measured at between 55 and 65 miles an hour. Here is a look at what it did to the fire. You can see the smoke plume blowing across the city. This is as viewed from the Broadmoor Hotel. And then as some of the newer fuels were being burned in some of the buildings, you see the incredible growth of that pyrocumulus cloud and the smoke plume. Um, as those fires were coming into northwestern parts of Colorado Springs. And so what ended up happening then was the flank of that fire got shoved right down here into the Mountain Shadows area and into the extreme northwestern parts of the Peregrine area. And all